Hey, this is Off the Cuff, and I'm Steve from TorahFamily.org. When we first came to the understanding that all of God's Word really does stand forever, like Isaiah said, and that nothing would pass from His law until heaven and earth passes, like Yeshua said, we were having people, and I mean lots of people, telling us how the law was bondage and we should stay away from it even though the Word says His law is freedom. <laughs> I had many people say to me, Steve, you're trying to earn your salvation. But does a murderer who gets saved stop murdering to earn his salvation? Or does he stop murdering because he's saved and wants to do what's right? <laughs> he stops because he wants to do what's right. But if a murderer doesn't stop murdering after he's been saved, you're going to question his salvation, wouldn't you? Of course you would. Likewise, one doesn't pursue the Torah, the law, to be saved. One pursues the law because they're saved. 1 John chapter 3 here says that very same thing. Anyone born of God will not continue to sin. Now, before we go any further, I believe there needs to be a clarification given for many. We need to understand there's a difference between the law and the covenant. Let me say that again. There's a difference between the law and the covenant. The law is the foundation to the covenant. The covenant is the agreement to walk in accordance to the law. For example, a man and woman will repeat vows at their wedding. These vows are the basic foundation to their marriage. These vows are that which they agree to follow in their marriage. And that agreement to those vows is the covenant. Again, that agreement to those vows is the covenant. A normal flow in a wedding ceremony is where the minister asks the woman, Will you take this man to be your husband, to love him and to cherish him, to do this and that, and then lists out the vows. She then responds with, I will. Then the same happens with the man. The minister asks him, Will you take this woman to be your wife, to love her and to cherish her, to do this and that, and then lists out the vows. He then responds with, I will. The vows are the basic foundation to the marriage, and the agreement to follow those vows to each other is the covenant. The agreement is the actual covenant between the two based on the vows. And that's what we see at Mount Sinai with Yahweh and the children of Israel. Consider Exodus 24. When Moses went and told the people all Yahweh's words and laws, they responded with one voice, Everything Yahweh has said, we will do. Moses then wrote down everything Yahweh had said. It was a marriage covenant. The people said, we will will. But it wasn't just the people who was to do something. Many times Yahweh gives if-then statements of what he would do throughout the scriptures. This is especially so at the time of the covenant at Mount Sinai. Exodus 19. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, the agreement to obey, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession, although the whole earth is mine. So the covenant is the agreement based on obedience to the law, obedience to the Torah. In fact, this is all based on the covenant given to Abraham. Yahweh made a covenant, a promise to do something to Abraham. Later, in chapter 17, we see Yahweh command Abraham to continue to walk before him blamelessly. And what did Abraham do? Nine chapters later, it says he obeyed. 
To understand more on this, please see our teaching, The Eternal Covenant, and Before You Deny Him. The covenant through Moses at Mount Sinai was a continuation of this covenant to Abraham, and it was a marriage covenant. Thus, the words given in the book of Isaiah. For your maker is your husband. Yahweh Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. This marriage was a covenant of love as shown in Deuteronomy. It was a covenant of love, not harsh cruelty. A covenant of love, not bondage. A covenant of love, not something impossible to do. Deuteronomy 7.12 If you pay attention to these laws and are careful to follow them, then Yahweh your God will keep his covenant of love with you as he swore to your forefathers. Keeping his commands is how we show our love to him in this relationship. I know that sounds foreign to some people, but it's true. Keeping his commands is how we show our love to him as shown here in Exodus 20. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, Deuteronomy chapter 11, and Deuteronomy chapter 30, Yeshua said the same thing. John chapter 14, verse 15. John 14, 21. John 14, 31. And John 15, 10. And even consider 1 John chapter 5. This is how we know that we love the children of God. By loving God and carrying out His commands. This is love for God to obey his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. The covenant is referred to as a covenant of love over and over again in the scriptures. 2 Chronicles 6.14, Nehemiah 1.5, and Daniel chapter 9, verse 4. So, in keeping with his covenant to Abraham, he made a covenant to all of Israel through Moses. This covenant through Moses happened on the feast day known as Shavuot. It's found in Leviticus 23. It's become known as the day of Pentecost in the modern church today. The anniversary of this day in the second chapter of Acts is what's remembered more so by many believers today. What many forget though, or just don't know, is that day in the second chapter of Acts is the anniversary of the marriage covenant at Mount Sinai. The second chapter of Acts was Yahweh giving a glimpse of what's coming in the future. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 Now it is God who has made us for this very purpose and has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Well, what's to come? It's when the Spirit puts the law in our hearts through the new covenant, as prophesied through Jeremiah as shown here. We're now waiting for the new covenant, the wedding of the Lamb as noted here in Revelation. The time when he places the law in our hearts as noted in Jeremiah 31. I know many believe we're in the new covenant now. However, please notice verse 34. At the time of the New Covenant, we will no longer be telling people about Yahweh. As it is right now, well, we're still doing that. We're doing what Yeshua told us just before he left to go to prepare a place for us. What's that? Telling others and making disciples. So this lets us know we're not in the New Covenant just yet. We cover that in more detail in our teaching, The Eternal Covenant. When he comes for his bride, the wedding will happen, and that covenant will place his law in our hearts as prophesied in Jeremiah. One can't help but wonder when that will happen. There are just so many parallels and similarities in the scriptures 
as to when it will happen. However, he died on Passover. He rose on first fruits. He ascended on the anniversary of the flood, according to the Septuagint. And he sent the Holy Spirit on Shavuot, Pentecost, to guarantee what's to come. That being the time the law is placed in our hearts through the new covenant. So could he gather his people days before a future Shavuot as he did at Mount Sinai? Well, the timing remains to be seen. But let it be known, when he does, it will be a covenant of love founded on his law, the Torah, just as it was in the book of Exodus. Now, at the release of this current recording, we're only a little over a week away from Shavuot on the calendar that we follow. Anyone who knows me will tell you how I always watch the feast days with great interest. And this one will be no different. In Exodus 19, we see the Father brought them to the mountain three days before and told them to wash their clothes and be ready. So, will that be how he does it again in the future for the new covenant? Very possible. We have a teaching on this topic titled, The Prophetic Significance of Shavuot. You might consider watching it. It was the day before Shavuot that the trumpet blew and he came down on the mountain. That in itself is very reminiscent of the trumpet that blows at the resurrection when Yeshua himself comes down in the clouds. Again, this was the day before Shavuot. If things are to repeat in like manner of the covenant given through Moses, then it seems something could happen on the day before a future Shavuot again with the covenant through Yeshua, the prophet likened unto Moses. So, it seems to me the resurrection could actually take place on that day before Shavuot, the day where we see the loud trumpet and him coming down in the clouds at Mount Sinai. Again, very reminiscent of what we see told to us regarding Yeshua's return. It's a plausible scenario that fits with what has happened in the past. And we know he makes known the end from the beginning, from ancient times what is still to come. At that time, we change our clothes for the wedding on the fourth day as seen in Revelation. However, the point is, it was a covenant of love. And the new covenant is the same because it will be based on the Torah just the same. So please, never forget, obedience to the Torah is how we show our love to the Father. Keeping the marriage vows is how we show our love to Him. Well, that's all I have. Think about it. Pray about it. But more than anything, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Until next time, Shalom.